Hey guys, today we got the opportunity to interview Dilla Stone, who is an electronic artist and songwriter based out of Berlin, and he has well over 100 million streams on Spotify, so his perspective is always going to be valuable for us. Uh, we get into his, his creative process, some of the gear and plugins that he likes to use, his, his live performance setup, and even how he broke his speakers learning how to sidechain, and a lot more, so please enjoy. Dillison, thank you for uh, thank you for joining me today. I'm I'm uh, I'm real excited to talk with you because I consider you to be one of the most creative people I've ever met. You're like a you're like this like endless well of creativity. I'm, I want to <laughs> I want to yeah I want to dive into that. Like I want to I want to. Uh, <laughs> That's very nice of you, but I, I could say the same about you. Oh, stop it! Stop it! No. So you are in Berlin, right? Yes, sir. How long right now. Been, how long have you been living there now? So I moved here, I think about like seven years ago now. Right. Yeah, why why did you originally move there? Because you were living uh, in the UK before that, right? There was like one year where I was living in London, Copenhagen and Berlin in the span, in the span of like nine months. Uh, but I ended up, um, <laughs> I, moved, I moved from London back to Denmark because I was like, hey, look, I want to make music. And like, yeah. I'm really going to, I was working in like a side hustle job that I hated. Uh, but I was like, no, I want to go home and I want to make music. And I was there for like nine months. And then I met this uh, singer songwriter called Michelle Lennett, who had like a bunch of huge cuts here in Germany, like a bunch of number ones. And she kind of just got me a publishing deal in a week, signed me. And... <laughs> how, <laughs> how, <laughs> does that, literally... how does that work? <laughs> it works like this. We had a session together and then we sat in a pizzeria and she goes, um, what are you doing right now? I'm like, ah, I'm working in a car rental agency at the airport she goes that's horrible and i was like yeah it's horrible she's like how much money do you need a year i was like this much money she's like ah, a little bit a little bit higher i was like this much money and she goes all right cool i'll see what i can do and then oh, like three beautiful. days later then that's three beautiful. days later she calls me while i'm standing there in my uh my my suit renting out a station wagon <laughs> to a family going to jutland and uh, she goes hey move to germany i got you the money and then i yeah, I went down there and I just started writing with her. I think we did like the first year, we did like a hundred sessions. So you wouldn't have moved to um you wouldn't have moved to Berlin had it not been like for her? I don't know. No, no. Mm. I mean I for me, I I'd been to Germany before writing, because my management, funnily enough, was also based in Berlin at the time. Yeah. Uh, so I'd been there before to write, but I hadn't really considered moving there until um yeah, until someone was like, Hey, I believe in you. <laughs> Come oh, down. Oh man, and that's that's beautiful. Cut. I that's, know, that's I know, beautiful. I know. Yeah, no, it really. So, um, I mean, I, I would. There's a couple. There's only a few places in the in the world, I think, where you can like do music on a very competitive level. Yeah. Um, like in, like an international international level, international level. Um, no, it's true. Yeah, it's some hubs. Yeah, exactly. And I think Berlin is definitely one of those. So, um, you've maybe. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've you've had quite an interesting upbringing i think because you you were born in denmark and then you you went to school right in yeah in china yes right? sir i can even show you off it's over here. and then you this moved is... over to liverpool yeah right okay cool <laughs> this is not this is a replica we didn't steal it that will be illegal <laughs> right right and then you moved to uh berlin so and you've been there for a while now, so I, I wonder, um, are you considering like moving away from Berlin soon, or do you feel like you've found your your home there? I mean, I think at this point, um, I think at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm I kind of want to stay somewhere. I think as as you get a little bit older, you go, hey, like moving somewhere brand new and saying goodbye to all my friends for the, for the, for the sake of new might not always be the best thing. Mm -hmm. Um, when I first moved here, Mo, who's my best friend and also my manager, which is very nice, went, told me I had to buy a bunch of really heavy furniture. So I didn't, didn't have to move anymore. Right. And I did. So now I got a huge dining table. I got a bed and I got everything. So yeah, uh, you're, you're if I'm going to move, it's going to be for a really good reason. <laughs> um, yeah. That's an interesting, now, like psychological Trip. Yeah, yeah, no, really. I moved here. I moved here in like three suitcases. Yeah, because that's how I was already so downsized. I like didn't own anything. Right. Uh, but I mean, now also here in. I mean, I have such a big network here in Germany now. Um, um mm -hmm. which, I mean, 
Germany is one of the biggest music markets in the whole world. I'm loving it here. The people are super nice. It's very affordable. Uh, the winters are rough, but then you get to go to LA. Yeah. Come hang out with the... Yeah, yeah. Hang out with y'all over there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I wonder, like, what's your what's your schedule like for making music, like, on a day-to-day basis? Do you, do you like, do you wake up and start at the same time, sort of like you're you're working a nine to five or something for music or do you just kind of wait until you're feeling like you want to work on music? I have learned through trial and error that the, for me, it, but it's not the same for everybody, but for me, uh, I have to have like set times of working. If I don't have this, then it's just complete chaos. Mm. Like it's like this, I think working, for example, I, I work primarily as uh, as a songwriter and as a producer and, and as an artist. And there's not really mm. somebody who's there at like 11 a.m. going like, are you at your desk? Are you checked in? You know, are you yeah. have you completed your, right. your daily KPIs? That's all um, up to you, right? <laughs> yeah. And so you kind of have to become your own. Well, you are self-employed at the end of the day, right? So I, I'll, I, I work Monday through Friday. I don't work weekends. Like you don't work um, on music at all on weekends? No, 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 no. Mm. Um, I also don't, I mean, unless I get like a spark of, you know, like you've one of those moments where you're like, oh, yeah. it's late at night and you go, I just want to do this remix, then fine. But that's not, that's that for me is passion. Totally. More so than, uh, it's more so than working. Mm. I typically work from around about like 11 until nine. So 11 in the morning until nine in the evening. Mm. Um, and then I know I typically cut my, I stop whatever I'm doing at around nine, 10 that like, and then I just relax because I had a really, when I first started, I had a really, really bad problem with the concept of like, like you were saying like, Oh, do I feel like making music? Yeah. 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 Cause that's like, if it's such a subjective thing and it, it can depend on your mental health and yeah. your state, maybe you don't feel like making music and that's totally fine. Like that's mm. perfectly cool. But it can also sometimes become like a vicious cycle. Then at the end of the day, you're like, I didn't make music. I didn't even work on anything because I yeah, didn't feel yeah. like it. And that's fine. Um, so I kind of have to force myself into like a rigid structure of going like, hey, I'm going to work Monday through Friday. I'm going right. to work 11 until 9. Right. And then after that, it's a free fall. And then the weekends, I can do whatever I want. I can nice. just lay yeah. down and relax. But uh, it's very yeah, important. That sounds like a good balance. And also what that tells me is that you, you have work messed on up me- a lot. <laughs> you, you work on music. <laughs> whether you are feeling like you want to or not, because you're, like you said, you're, you're clocked in at that point. Right. So how, sure. how do you, I mean, how do you handle that? If you're like, you're, you're just not feeling it. And like, you still know that you want to be creative or that you need to work on something. How do you, how do you handle that challenge? Like, how do you, how do you approach that? I mean, I think any, even if you're having your worst, least inspired day of your life, you can still sit down and make like a loop. Yeah, you can still sit down and like find sounds on right. uh, somewhere out there. You can still sit down and do research on artists, or maybe even just like come up with some lyrical concepts. Like, there's always something to do. You don't have to have the that they have the whole grand vision of how to make a song. You can maybe do something small, right. but it's still creative or relevant. Or you organize your samples, or maybe you catalog your tracks, but like or something that makes it that gets you to the point that when you really have to perform or when you yeah. really have to log in and you really have to make this song, you've done all that prep work. Um, yeah. Like there's I mean, lots also, of ways I think, you can be productive. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I also really think that you, you can be creative whenever I think I understand that there are neat, that these like flow state moments. I feel them too. And I, mm-hmm. when you hit them, it's, it's, that's what, that's what I work towards, right. but they don't always come, but I still feel like I need to do something or I want to do something. Yeah. Totally. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not a big subscriber to the whole, like, you know, if you don't feel creative, you don't have to do anything. I'm like, well, Same. then you're never going to do anything. Yeah. Like, what yeah. are you talking like, yeah. Also, also, also with people who are like, oh, I get most creative at like two in the morning. I'm like, <laughs> right. Like if I can't do it before 9 PM, I'm not going to do it after 9 PM. <laughs> right. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Come it's, on. You can, I think that you can create the conditions to be creative, right? Like, sure. Uh, when, when you're sitting at your computer, the only way that like, it's like, like you can manufacture it. Like if you're sitting at your computer and you're messing around with sounds, like something will, 
like spark and then sure. you'll get that like bit of motivation and inspiration and, and you can kind of pull on that thread. Right. I think what people get it mixed up is like, they think that, that by making music like this, you're making music without a soul or without a heart or without like a purpose, which like this can sometimes be this, like people are like, Oh yeah. But what if I don't like, I really need to feel it. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I feel most of the music I make, like hopefully, otherwise I wouldn't yeah. have made that yeah, right. specific thing. I'm just right. doing it at like, with purpose, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, those, this is specifically for like, this is like 60% of the time. The other 40% where you're in flow state and you're like just bouncing off the walls, then like yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or when you wake up in the morning and you go like, I am so inspired. This is totally cool. I, I love those days. Absolutely. But they don't always come. Right. And when they don't come, you still have to be pushing forward, I think. Totally. Absolutely. Are there any like, are there any pieces of gear or like plugins or software that you feel like have been helpful and inspiring you to to make new stuff or to think differently or to you know like is there anything that has been cropping up lately that you've been liking (laughs) you're about to put me on on some secrets who's watching this who's watching this (laughs) i mean okay fine 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 um i've really been loving uh autochroma recently by imajaro imajaro what is is that i think i'm I'm hoping i'm not saying correctly uh, it's like a granulizer, but, um, it has a super fun, but also intuitive kind of UI. Um, mm. you pretty much just throw it on anything you want and you can turn it into crazy glitches or like giant expanding pads. Mm. Um, it's got like a three stage granulizer, I think. So you can granulize at three different rates, for example. Mm. And anyway, it's, it's a, so much fun because you can throw in like a really basic sound or yes, throw it on yes. top of something that's not very exciting and yes. then turn like one synth plug into a giant pad man i love that, st- i love stuff like that where you can just take something that's like you said real basic and then transform yeah. it into something completely different like i just uh, exactly i love that i try to i try to really find shit where like or plugins where they they do a lot of big stuff really really fast like i'm not very good at the the Especially that in the creation process, I like to put something like Autochroma and just to see if it works or not. Yeah. Um, Portal has also been really fun. I bought that during Black Friday. I, mm. I looked at it for a long time, but I hadn't really um, made the jump. So I got that, um, which has been super fun on vocals, especially mm. uh, of like throws. That's really cool. Otherwise, I'm like, I'm slowly getting into uh, like very slowly. I'm like not a, I'm not a very good musician. Um, I'm, I'm better at, kind of come producing stuff yeah um but i'm slowly getting into analog synths um, nice. or digital or like actual hardware sorry not not i have one pure analog and then i have one digital i have a virus and then i got like a, a juno clone but i'm just like having fun with sending midi out for like midi that you i would use for serum or diva or something yeah, yeah. maybe try to throw it out throw it out to one of the the hard synths and then see what comes out and recording it back in and then getting yeah. that kind of permanent experience of going like, Hey, look, like this is the, this is the way for him. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. go in and tweak everything now. You like the, uh, you like the permanence, like of the audio where like, well, I don't, I don't like it. It makes me very uncomfortable, but uh-huh. I think that's, what's fun. I think that's where it, then like, you have to start kind of treating it like you're sampling again. Exactly. Um, which I think is opens up a whole nother bunch of, opportunities that you don't necessarily think of when you're using like a like a vst because then you can always go back or like re-edit the mid like change any any envelope you want yeah um, do you do you feel like there's something to be said for like physical knobs and like how that influences? oh yeah no no this this really yeah I, I started actually trying to see if i could like buy a midi controller that i just constantly had like hard hard linked to serum or something but like i, yeah. I I haven't found a solution quite yet because I would need to manually set it up every time. I just want something that happens organically because yeah. the feeling of sitting there and like turning the actual like envelope on a filter or something, it's like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it feels good. And yeah. then like the way you can be musical then as opposed to sitting there with your mouse and like drawing the actual automation is like not quite the same. Yeah. True. But, um, yeah. Using a mouse is, is never the same, but no. um, still effective. Don't get me wrong. Still, definitely this. still effective, one hundred percent. And you know, you're like you said. I mean, you're you consider yourself to be better at the producing part of it and like the the overall stuff and being creative with you know audio and stuff. So, so I think a lot of people get started like 
with songs just you know, from a basic chord progression or maybe starting with the drums. But how, how do you handle it if you're not necessarily like a keys player or something? Like how do you, what, what strategies do you use to like? I go to beatstars.com. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got a selection of stuff for you guys today. I cooked uh-huh, it all yesterday. Uh-huh. Uh, no, um, like I have, I have, I have musical theory understanding, and like I can, I can yeah. build chords. And I, I mean, even before I, you gain theory, I feel like a lot of us intuitively have this sense of does this feel good or right. not? Like, do these two notes go together or not? I think you're so it's so ingrained in us. Yeah. Um, but no, I can, I can, I can draw chords for days yeah um i think i think for me to trick specifically around it's just then just humanizing my midi enough like making sure that i really start messing with and making it sound imperfect um mm. so i spent a lot of time on this like dragging the notes so they're not like not lined up exactly yeah, and the yeah, velocities yeah. like change, and, changing the velocities and yeah. like doing like my my new little like pan changes yeah. for example on notes so like they don't they don't just all come straight down the middle it might be like a little um, but I have like some really fast shortcuts I can use. Yeah. Um, and also in, in FL studio, which you use, like they, yeah. isn't there like a, there's like a, it's like a tool that you use where you can like, or maybe it's like a drop down menu, I think, where you can like select this, different courses. It's like right? an arpeggiator creator or something, but it's like 12 different options. And one of them is like humanizing. Mm. And it, so you can just like, I just, and it's like, I go alt E enter and all of my notes are humanized like they're all like they're all like a little like little like yeah. drifting a little bit and like the yeah. panning is a little bit i yeah. also i didn't know this until about a couple of months ago what? which is embarrassing considering i've been using fl for like half of my life at this point <laughs> what like actually half of my life and it is that fl has grooves mm, yeah Cause I was, I was so jealous of Ableton's grooves. Cause I like, obviously I know I have a bunch of friends who use Ableton and I use Ableton for my live show. So I was like, damn, these are mm. like super cool. Uh, but yeah, they exist. Do you, it's a uh, alt Q baby for anyone watching. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you, have you ever thought about using Ableton for music production or do you just want to stick with like, I mean, I what did always known. I did. Ableton was the first DAW that I ever purchased. Oh, I didn't know I got that. It from, I got it for my like 16th birthday birthday I, or some shit. Oh, funny. My mom gave it to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I love it, but I think that I sometimes can get a little uh, overwhelmed by mm. the amount of options that you have. Mm. I think for, I think in FL, like in the beginning, like nowadays, like they, I'm like, they're not the same, but they're nearing the same capabilities, I think. Yeah. Uh, like in the stock, I'm not talking about Max for Live. I'm not talking about yeah. all that crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff you guys yeah. got going. This is way out of my reach. <laughs> um, but I'm talking. I'm just talking about like the actual, um, yeah, bare bones that you need to do. But I felt yeah. like it, in FL it was a little easier for me to just do like, do you want steak and fries or do you want chicken and potatoes? I'm like, oh, I want steak and fries. Yeah, yeah. Versus being to, like, what do you want to eat? Yeah, like, here's you can have here's, anything. here's all the food in the world. What do you <laughs> right, want? I was like, right. um. I mean, in the beginning, that was super nice for me because I, I, I thought that was a bit overwhelming in Ableton. Uh, nowadays, I think to have the kind of flexibility to do whatever you want becomes kind of necessary, especially when when we're doing, for example, live shows. Like, I need, like, I have to do it in Ableton. I can't do it anywhere else. Um, mm-hmm. Like, just because it has that much flexibility. Um, how, how do you how do you use Ableton in your live shows? Like, how do you incorporate it exactly? Like, just from the so, clip launching or? No, I run it all in arrangement. Yeah, actually, because I also I program my own lights. Um, so I program my own lights. I do all my own vo- like vocals. I do my whole in ear mix. I do uh, all of my like stems for all of my tracks, and right. then I send it out through like eye connectivity, um, like play audio. Um, so I do like I do. I'm a one man show pretty much. I just turn up and I go like. Here's here's the audio. Wait, I'm doing my own. In- what do you say it was? Eye connectivity. What is that? Play audio. Eye connectivity. What what is have, that? So oh, I actually have one here, but I don't. This one, this one, I'm not I'm not using it at the moment because I just upgraded. But this is like for example, this is the Play Audio 12. Um, so this is like it's an interface. Yeah. But it has at the back, it's got ten balanced 
TRS outputs. Right. So what you do is you you just throw this on as your output on Ableton, and then all of a sudden you have five stereo outs. Right. So you can do your vocal, you can do your drums, you can do your bass, you can do your harmonics, whatever. And then you have a little headphone output for in ear. It's even got. It also has. It has. You have the possibility here to link it to two computers, so it has redundancy. Oh, nice. Okay. So if one computer fails, then it swaps to the other one. Yeah. yeah great company. Great company. Yeah. So, um, I use them a lot. And so, how how does it how does it work in Arrangement View? You just have like your stems, like yeah. For each song. I started cheating now. I started cheating now because like I I wanted to before before I was doing stop start with music because it was a little bit easier to facilitate. Yeah. Um, especially in like a live session, uh, but now yeah. I'm kind of now I'm doing now pretty much I'm doing like I'm producing it in FL like a, a half an hour live show mm-hmm. with like per like really nice smooth transitions. Yeah, uh, and then loading that into Ableton, and then we assign parts to like keys player to me, and then we figure out what we want to play on top of it. But like the bare bones of the drums and the bass and stuff, yeah. I wanted to try get as close to a DJ live show as possible. Yeah, because uh, I think that's kind of fun. Yeah, no. but are you? Do you have it like? I'm assuming that you have it set up so that it's you don't have to do that much during the show because you you want to be focused on your vocals, right? Yeah, I sing. So no, no, yeah. no. When I'm playing by myself, like I I can just set the option to that it all my instruments are enabled. Yeah. Like I just have the stems with everything in it. Uh, right. When I play with uh, my my keys guy, then obviously we have different different stems. So he's playing actually live. Uh, with the with the tracks, so he, and then you're, he's like playing through your patches, right? Like using your yes, no, no. He's created his own patches, and then he has an Ableton Max. This is this is also where I was like, yeah, we couldn't <laughs> do it, but it has a whole another thing that he set up, and I that one I can't divulge because he made that himself. Uh, oh, okay, okay. But, but it, it pretty much it rolls through. It rolls through like whole racks of like synths and effects cool. as the show progresses. Yeah. Um, so there's automatic shit like changes that happen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But it's but so he has his own sounds that sound like the sounds that you made in your yeah. songs. Is that it? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or 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 where possible, I send my actual preset patches. Yeah. Right. Like you like you're saying. Sorry. Yeah. I'll I'll send like I'll send my serum or my diva patches over. Um, yeah. There was Man, just some that's... awkward times when I was using like FL stock stuff. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah, so... yeah. 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 Horrible. Yeah. I'm sure some stuff can be replicated, but other stuff is like much harder because of the quirks of the yeah, synth but, and stuff, right? But my keys, my keys guy, Magnus Temples, he's also an incredible artist, but he has a really good ear for sound design, mm. um, and he can make like a close enough replica real fast. Man, that's so important. That, yeah. That's a that's an underrated skill. I mean, being able to like hear something and then have such a good understanding of this. And I used to be so good at it when I was younger because I just sit down and like massive and like try to make like a. Skrillex dubstep waffle wobble or something, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But now as I got older, it's not quite the same. Yeah, totally, totally. Are you gonna? Do you have plans to make like big changes to your live set in like this year for your shows later? Or yeah, um, I mean, so I started playing live for the first time seriously last year. Um, I tried to take the artistry side of the music industry a lot more serious in the last year. Yeah. Um, and with that came like I played my first sold out headline show last year to run about 250 people. And um, if all goes well, we're also going to sell out the next one, but this time for 500 people. Mm. So in my head, I want to do twice as much and twice as big and twice mm. as good uh, mm. minimum. Right. So uh, we got like an amazing guy who des- who designs lights and builds them and he's going to bring a bunch of stuff and, Oh, so so the burden is less on you now because you were you were doing a lot of the lights yourself, right? So now you're I mean, not. I still I still I still I still think I want to do that. I think there's some. Mm. I think it's become a little bit of like my creative expression too yeah. to sit there and like yeah. mess around. I've got like five five tube lights and like I sit there like at night listening to my tracks, like imagining how I could get people to lose their minds. You know, that's kinda, yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah, totally. It's um, messing around with lighting rigs is interesting. It's it's kind of like being creative with that? music in a way, but it's like it, but it's different at the same time because you, you're you're thinking about like you know the the feeling in relation sure. to the music and how that relates to color. I find that pretty interesting as well. And you you uh, can like mix the like 
temperatures and stuff of like the yeah, sure. the color so you can change them like that and i feel like it's it's kind of similar to music but like it's obviously different so i mean I nah, it's like, like it. it's so close i'm going like and now we come to the build up it's gonna start to strobe and lots of strobing and yeah, strobing yeah. and crazy strobing and then drop and then blah, blah, blah. yeah 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 uh, exactly that's yeah, really cool exactly but I mean, so i always think i want to have a little bit but yeah it gets bigger and bigger which is and more and more complicated and racks have to get easier to travel with but also more reliable and mm. which so, is so crazy. for the the uh, lighting design that you have like as it stands right now are you are you like playing through like a lighting arrangement or whatever it's called and syncing it up to the music or like how does that work or do you have somebody who's like triggering all this stuff <laughs> Too secret. Next, no. Uh, there's can't, a, there's can't a couple. Divulge. No, there's a, there's a bunch of different. There's a bunch of different um, kind of. You so what you first of all you need you need a uh, USB to DMX converter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's a great company called Entech. They make them. They're relatively cheap. Then not that. They're not that big. That are run about like this small, like tiny. Yeah. Um, which just converts your yeah your MIDI information to DMX. You can then send across the system. Um, I use the Entex standalone. They have a standalone software that I use, which then connects to a, a plugin mm-hmm. in Ableton. And then you just assign parameters. So I have like you assign all your colors or your dim, like your dimmers, your straw, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, depending on whatever light patch you choose. Right. And then it tempo syncs to the songs as well, which is super nice. Oh, um, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because it links up, it gets the actual tempo information from Ableton. And mm. then we'll actually line up. So even if you're running like pre-programmed stuff yeah. through their standalone, it'll still be to the beat, um, which is kind of cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, it's like super, super... So it like quantizes like the programming to the beat? I think so, yes. Because like it's, it's, it can't, it's just... Run, it's, the standalone is pretty much just running LFOs. It's just yeah. LFOs that trigger like a dimmer, for example. Right. So you just set the type of LFO you want to use and then the tempo or the rate, right? Yeah. Um, the rate, sorry. And then it connects to the tempo at Ableton and it's automatic, like it's triggering to the time. Oh, to the beat. And it's, That's crazy. Yeah, it's like a really, it's a really fun solution. And I think that it's, especially if you're like me in the beginning, I was a bit of a one man show. Yeah. And I think it just adds that next level that you don't have to bless all the lighting engineers out there, light, light designers, but sometimes the house lights are not incredible. Mm. Or maybe the house lights don't really fit what your overall vision is. Like my vision for my shows is to create a club atmosphere as much as possible. Totally. Um, So I like the feeling of like no front, like no front lights. Just like we just got my tube lights in the back just going like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, Yeah. So it just gives you the freedom to do whatever you feel like you want, which is cool. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you learn how to do that mostly on YouTube or? Like, yeah did, yeah youtube university yes sir. i mean <laughs> yeah I, I tried i tried a few different programs out um but i mean i i get like i have like a little bit like i i tend to fixate on a certain thing for like a period of time um so i fixated about learning how to midi program lights for like two weeks yeah and then all of a sudden, like I'm like I'm on Reddit asking all the people, and obviously they give like all they give they give all the wrong answers. Like people are like this is impossible. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like a week later, I figured out how to do it. Uh, <laughs> Man, people will make you feel like everything's impossible. I know, but I go back. What I've started doing is I go back and I edit my post with the solution nowadays because like. I want to be somebody one of those else people. might be looking for it, right? I know, I know. I mean, I want to be those people where I'm like, hey, look, like I found out how to do it. Yeah. All of these people are wrong. Here's the solution. Have fun. All right. Um. So, uh, but yeah, no. I just, I just tend to like, I tend to find something and I try to fixate on how to learning how to do it, and then, um. So I had that with lighting design, but yeah, I just taught myself through YouTube. Yeah, um, I'm sure you already had that skill set from music production, like. Yeah, it's like drawing MIDI automation. Right. Like you just the only thing, the only thing. Learn. Yeah, it's just how to figure out how to like patch lights. That was difficult because mm. like some of the lights are not registered as like brand and products. So you had to like create your own lighting patches. And yeah, right. How to assign DMX? Like yeah. what a DMX universe is? It was like yeah, right. Universe, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 
Yeah, and especially coming from just an audio like uh, background for me personally, like um, it's it's definitely interesting stepping into that whole new world. And also, that I feel like a problem is that a lot of times people's rigs are so different from the rig that you have. So mm-hmm. you have to like do all of this, like you have to patch all the knowledge, yeah. like you just have to take their concepts and then try to figure out like what it is for your specific rig. Whereas like, there were like people who were using a discontinued product right. to like convert USB to DMX. And right. they were like, yeah, no, just use this. I'm like, they stopped making this like five years ago. Like it <laughs> right. doesn't exist anymore. Right. Like right. I know you have it and like pretty much anyone else out there might have it, but like, I need another solution. Yeah, totally. Um, well, I think that's impressive though, that you were able to uh, incorporate you know, lighting into, into your shows and, and just like, you know, taking it upon yourself to learn how to do all that. I think that's, I think that's awesome. I think that thanks. The next step that I'm going to do, I'm just going to try it. It might not be super cool, but like you can get these, like uh, the MIDI rings that allow you to program on a Y and X axis. It's a MIDI what? It's a MIDI ring connected via Bluetooth, I think to your computer. Okay. So it's going to be like a little delayed, I'm sure. Right. But then it like, you can pretty much raise your hand or like turn it. Oh, It'll send right. MIDI I think I've seen those. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. a bit like the Mio glove that, like, uh, Imogen, Imogen Heap made. Yeah. yeah, but that one, that one, that one was, like, $12,000. <laughs> I'm never going to get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they was have, like, crazy, though. I did see that. I know, I know. Yeah, the Ariana Grande video, that is super oh, crazy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you can get rings now, which are, like, much cheaper. I'm sure they're not as good, but I think it could be fun to, like, sync it to the strobe parameter, for example. Hmm. And then you could literally hold out to the audience and just go like, yeah, and totally. lights to just start strobing. I think that could be pretty cool. Yeah. It might yeah. also be like a little gimmicky, but I, I, I think there's fun, fun ways to kind of try bridge technology and performance and like see what works and what is a bit gimmicky. Yeah. I think totally. sometimes it can be gimmicky, you know, but maybe yeah. for a moment. Yeah. I'm glad you said that too, because I wanted to ask you too, um, you have a background in acting. And yes, sir. I, I wanted to ask you how you felt like that, how you incorporate that into music or into performance. Like, how do you feel like that benefited you? Maybe even in terms of songwriting as well. Oh, no, it's like, but it's, it's actually, it's kind of crazy because I think I, I, I'm, in a weird way, I think it, it's one of the best things I ever did for my music career. <laughs> really? Is, I, yeah, I think it's ironic, but it's I, I get, um, I think having three years to to one. I, I mean, first of all, just like on the technical level, every day, every day, pretty much, we worked on our voices. Yeah, like we spent at least an hour or two only purely on vocal training mm. or learning how to uh, harmonize together or correct timing when to breathe um we spend like three years doing this um so being in the studio now if someone's struggling with timing or they're struggling with pitching or like they're not breathing in the right places or like they can't support themselves through a line like i have the knowledge of like how to feed back to them how to fix it and we Mm. can deal with it in the room right then like then and there um as opposed to kind of just leaving them on their own and being like you sort that out that's like yeah i'm the, i'm the producer i am going to produce um yeah, i get yeah. to like sit down and kind of support the singer which is i think super nice um yeah i also think there's something about the social element of like me having been an actor before like i have i have some social skills that i'm able to leverage in rooms yeah. with like sitting there with like three strangers like that i never met my entire life yeah yeah like how do you connect with someone because it how can be quite uncomfortable <laughs> yeah, yeah it's kind of yeah, but it is wow when you think about it for music it's kind of like going on like a group date and then, <laughs> yeah. and then they're, like, they're like, okay, yeah, you guys go away. See if you like each other. And do maybe you, uh, maybe you make some art. Like, I don't know. Right. Like you guys have fun. Like, right. uh, do you have any, like, do you have any specific things that you do to help kind of break the ice and the, and the tension a little bit to just like make things a little bit more comfortable for everybody? And, or do you just like, how do you, how do you approach that? It's so varied and it's so like sometimes, sometimes someone turns up, but then like really like introverted or maybe they're very yeah. extroverted even more than me. Maybe they had a really bad day, you know, mm, like, uh, yeah. f- but I think what I think the point of that is that I think you, I think it's the sensitivity to other people, which I think all of us have. I think all of us are sensitive to, uh, to others or how they're feeling on a specific, yeah. you know, I mean, you can tell if someone's having a bad day, but I think it's just being mindful of that and, um, 
caring about people. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I like to try have a lot of humor in my sessions. I think sometimes yeah. <laughs> music can be very heavy. Yeah. And I think especially when you meet someone brand new, I think sometimes it can be a little uncomfortable if you have to perform and you haven't had, you don't have that rapport yet. Yeah. You know, like if I was, I feel it sometimes too. And I'm like, you know, feeling a little bit nervous in a room and I don't necessarily make the best beat mm-hmm. like in the first hour. Then like, I also start getting a little bit self-conscious sometimes. So I think it's just nice to have a little bit of humor and, you know, uh, <laughs> just like, just be like, ah, that was a shit idea. I literally <laughs> said, yeah, no. No, I'm like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, this sounds like ass. And then like, <laughs> let's start over. And then we start over like, and I, yeah. I mean, I, I think some, some songs are serious, but I don't think they, I don't think all songs have to be. And I think sometimes it's nice to just have a little bit of like lightness yeah, so that people can kind of relax a little bit. Um, yeah. Do you, do you approach music differently when you're like in front of a group of people and you're like just having to come up with a vibe versus like just being by yourself and being able to spend as long as you want on any of the sounds? Like how do you, yeah. how do you do that differently? I think I make worse music by myself. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're less on the spot. Yeah. I think, I think, and I think if anyone disagrees with me, then like try going to studio and bring like an observer. Like they don't, they don't have to say anything. Yeah. They don't even have to, they don't even, they can just be on their phone or like yeah. even be listening to music. Like yeah. they, could, they could not even be in the room listening, but by virtue of them being there, you will make different choices. Mm. And I think, I think making when there's other people in the room, like I think I make, I think I make better choices. Um, when mm. I'm by myself, sometimes I think I can go down like lines of thinking or like experimentation, which are fun, but like they might not necessarily be like be good <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or accessible. Um, but I think having yeah. someone else in a room makes it like makes me make better decisions. Like I like to make music for other people like to listen to and, and to enjoy. Mm. I want I want others to like connect to it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to have others in the room to make sure that like it becomes like a collective thing as opposed to like, yeah. Do you, do you, ch- do you change like the order of what you start with? Like, would you just start with the drums or something and just get the, just get the beat going first and then try to like add on top of that if you have somebody else in there versus, you know, being like super zoomed into a patch or something like changing all, you know, like I feel like I have like. I'm like the biggest proponent of like, just get like the, get like the chords or like something mm. that like in, in first, like a, some kind of tonal scale and then just yeah. turn around and like start talking. Like, what's up? Like, what are we doing? Like, um, mm. what do we want to make today? Um, because I think uh, I've been in sessions before where we've all done it. We've all been there, but where someone sits and like tries to perfect the kick for like half an hour <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the first hour of the session. I'm like, yeah, like that's not important right now. <laughs> I've done this too. I've done this too. Don't get me wrong. I'm like, yeah, it's nearly there. It's nearly there. Like, me, you know, me, Man, that's the else producer's just... curse right there. Like we I know, just want to get everything sounding good, but I know, I know, I know. But like maybe, maybe just doing the chords for now is fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, it depends. It depends a lot. Sometimes like sometimes they, someone else would bring an inspo and like we, we jump off that. Um, like, or we find like a cool loop. Um, recently also, it's been fun to kind of sample other songs. Yeah. So, um, uh, FL like just got a, in the new update, it got a stem splitter in the DAW. Hmm. So it's been kind of fun to just grab, like grab like a track off Amazon or Beatport or something, and then just split the stems out. Hmm. Um, obviously we're sampling. It's all legal. <laughs> we're going to clear it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not hiding it. Um, so you like starting with samples because like you can, you can just manipulate something that's already there and make it interesting, like in a different way or, well, I mean, it depends cause some artists, some artists like, or like, so if I work for others, sometimes they really don't want to, they want to make something original, like an yeah. original idea. Yeah. Um, like, so then we will just start from scratch, like often with piano or if they want yeah. guitar, then like, we'll try to make that happen. But that's not yeah. always, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but for myself, like it, for myself, I like to try when I work for my own project, mm-hmm. I like to try to establish a vibe as quick as possible. Um, yeah. Like, especially just making like a pad or atmosphere, like a drone, mm. because I think from a drone, you can start building, like you can, you start to hear where it can like go, a synth kinda. line. Yeah. yeah or you start hearing like 
a baseline. And or you're something. talking about a note that's just like like a note or a group of notes that just kind of hang yeah, just, there. Yeah, just I'll just steady. hang. Like yeah. you just like hold D down. Yeah. And then all of it, like if you hold, if it just drones for long enough, like, and you then add a bass on top of it, then you go, ooh. Yeah. Then if you throw that bass down, you gotta go, ooh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. It but then to you, feel I think good, you start yeah. making, yeah, you start making cool choices. I think. Um, mm. I've been doing oh, that. Too. I really like that strategy as well. Like have just like a single note there or whatever. And you just, you just like let your ear take the song where it wants to go kind of. Oh. And uh, like, you'll hear where like different chords will go or different bass yeah. lines, just all in relation to that one pitch. So yeah, yeah, I really like doing that as well. I'm glad you said that. I had a session recently actually where like, I think, I think we made one of the best songs that I made all of last year, which is like, we, I was working with this artist and we done, we done four days together. Uh, and then on the last day, we're like, Hey, I just droned a note. And then she freestyled for 10 minutes mm. on a drone. Mm. And then we throw a reverb on it and we like call it a day. And everyone like, I just like, <laughs> like it was just vocals on top of the one. Yeah. Note. It's just a vocal on top of one note. And wow. then in post afterwards, like I, we dropped the vocals in and then I just started moving the bass around. Yeah. And then nice. all of a sudden you go like, because it, it was the feeling, right? Um, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I really, like in the next year, especially this year, I really want to try experiment more uh, with ways of getting a song started. Um, yeah. Ways to work with others. Um, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna try like, I have like a little notepad of like different ideas that I want to do. I heard from someone from some point that they like went in a session with a producer Mm-hmm. And they just went, hey, in the first 15 minutes, they were like, let's make the worst song that we can. Oh, I love that. Like for just for like 15 minutes, like as an exercise, like you're going to w- make the worst lyrics and the worst top line you ever made. <laughs> I'm going to make the worst beat that I can. And yeah. they, we're going to re- record it as bad as we humanly can. <laughs> and then I after 15 that. minutes. Yeah. But like then and then after 15 minutes, like I don't know if you have this saying in English, but we said like you have shaken, the, you've sh- you shook the bag. You know, like you, everyone's like come together because mm. everyone got to show how bad at their worst. Yeah. So now like even like, even like if you're having a medium day, it's still a lot better than the worst. And like, it's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, do you intentionally make something bad or did you like, did you just make something without any judgment about the quality? No, but I haven't tried it yet. Oh, 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 okay. 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 Cause like, like, it's just, it's something that I want to, like, it's my goal for the next year is to like, I like get some friends together even and be like, Hey, look, let's just experiment with ways to make music. I see. I Cause see, I think, I, see. I think this, I think especially in, in the, in, like in where I'm at in the industry, I think there's a very kind of set way of writing songs or this like a, which is a what? Set. I mean, you turn up, you talk, you make chords, you make a concept, you mm-hmm. freestyle, or you you freestyle. Sorry, then you make a concept, mm-hmm. and then you apply the lyrics. You write the lyrics. Melody. Yeah, you record it. You wrap up the production, and then that's it. Everybody goes home. Yeah, but like maybe there's a different way. Just to, or like maybe you can add like a step during that process mm. where you just make it a little bit smoother because it's like yeah. it's. Anyway, it's just a thought and it's something I want to try. No, no, I, I like that. I like that because, you know, and even like I've seen where people completely change up that, you know, classic order to where they'll just start with like a phrase. And it's, I think it'd be good for you, too, because you I mean, you started with remixes, did you not? Like yeah. mostly with bootlegs, bootlegs. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The classic. Yeah. The classic. Hype um, of SoundCloud days. Yeah. Do you, do you like starting with just vocals ever and building around like a, just a vocal melody kind of like you used to, or do you prefer, you know, how you work I now? think it got tougher. I think it got really hard. Like, I think it got harder for me to remix. Mm. I think I start, cause I start producing the song. Hmm. Like I start, I get a top line and then I just started, I start producing a track to it. I'm not necessarily like flipping it. I'm not yeah. necessarily yeah. creating new content out of it. Right. I'm creating new content for it, mm-hmm. which is like, I think it's also feedback I've getting to other people who remixed me is that like, Hey, look, this is super sick, but it sounds yeah. like an alternative production. Mm. Um, you, like it hasn't been pushed creatively. So I, I sometimes struggle with that. That like mm. when I'm making remixes nowadays, it's like, I'm going like, here's how I would produce it as opposed to like, how would I remix it? Like what, what, what could I do to it to, mm. to make it a new original idea? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I love I love starting with vocals because I think if, when you already have the lyric and the 
the melodies, then it's so much easier to, to find meaning in it in production. Yeah. Um, and I think Absolutely. you can start playing a lot more with like the concepts of like where there's gaps and where there isn't gaps or what people are saying or like right. one specific line or something. Yeah. Right, right. But also I, I think it's interesting how lyrics can not, can influence the music after like if you're working from just one lyrical concept to start with, how mm. like if you build around that way you can kind of incorporate like the theme of the lyrics with the music rather than you know, exactly. the other way around. So yeah. I think, I think I have this, this is something I really learned when I started making German music <laughs> or like producing for German artists. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, obviously I don't necessarily always get the lyrics, Yeah, but the lyrics actually are quite important for what you end up doing to the song. Right. Like you can infer emotion from the melodies fine. And like the, yeah. the, 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 the kind of heart of the song, but sometimes like the lyrics, kind of can change a whole production. Um, mm. So I thought I'd really, I really have to, I'd really had to learn to like check in and be like, what are you guys saying? Like, what is going on right now? Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 How, how is your German these days? Nicht so schlimm, aber yeah. <laughs> this will be your, what, fourth language? Yeah. Yeah. Slowly but surely. I, it's all slowly eating up my Mandarin, though. Like, sometimes mm. there's a really good local Chinese spot around the corner, and sometimes when I walk in, it's uh, it becomes like a weird mix of German and Mandarin and <laughs> Danish. Like, like your German's, like, taking up the space that, like, the yeah, Mandarin yeah. had? That's funny. I think I think the words that, like, so, the words in German that sound a little Chinese, or, like, the way that you create the sound, like, all of a sudden get, like, just supplanted into, the, like, the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a real hot mess if I ever go back to China. To like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. When you when you have a bunch of different versions of so like a song that you like and you don't know how to get it to 100% or to a place where you feel like you're like yes, this is what we're going to release. Like how do you how do you decide between different versions? Like how do you what kind of process do you use to like make sure that, you know, it's the right thing when you're unsure? Ah. Uh. Or, that, or is there that, a process? That, that a lot of people get paid a lot of money for. And even they yeah. can only guess sometimes. I think mm -hmm. I think that the thing is, like, you, good music is good music. Uh, no one knows what I, like, which song is going to be a hit. Mm -hmm. um, like, from just A-B testing different songs. Like, you can't, yeah. you don't know. Um, I think sometimes you can get to a stage in a song where like you've reworked it so much that it's, it can be hard to decide. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then I kind of just leave it for like a couple of weeks and then I return back to it. Mm. So you can kind of hear it with new ears. Um, yeah. I actually ended up also like, I ended up, I got to the point where I was like, I, I, I even didn't know anymore. Like the song was really good, but like yeah. I, I had, I was so involved in the process and like the nitty gritty of like each single moment in the song, that yeah. like it was hard to see the bigger picture, or like the to see the to see the trees for the forest, or the forest for the trees. I love yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, so I ended up sending it. We we got it sent to a producer in Denmark called Slow Mo, who then ended up finishing. It, actually, he did a bunch of additional production on it and taking it to like the next level mm. and like cleaning up what my ideas were and like really finding like taking what I had come up with and then enhancing it or like yeah. adding, adding new things to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that, this is, and this is also one of the first time that that, that that had happened to me. Cause also it was something that I was so deeply involved in and that I deeply cared about. Cause it's, it was one of That's the biggest moments. Of, the reason, it, was right? one, it was one of the biggest <laughs> moments. It is still one of the biggest moments in my entire life. And yeah, like, totally. I'm so like, I'm, I'm so yeah, grateful, but I also didn't also really wanted to do it right. And sometimes yeah. it's easier if you get someone with an outside perspective to come in, mm. uh, just like you get, might get someone else to come in to mix it or someone else to come in and master it. Yeah. Um, just get some I fresh ears it, on it. And yeah, I thought I really needed that for this song. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I was going to say that, that that's one of the things that makes it tough. Like the more that you care and the deeper you are with the song, I feel like the, you're almost too close to the song. And so it becomes harder to decide like which thing you should take away and which thing, you know, like, cause with sure. every version you're sacrificing one thing for another. Right. And yeah. so you have to figure out what's, what's worth it. And so yeah. that can be really hard if you like different things about different versions. So I think, uh, I've, I've just, I'm, I'm in the middle of like doing early spring cleaning in my house. 
Mm. And like, I wish there was someone else here to like throw away stuff for me. <laughs> it's like, do you use this? I'm like, no, but what if I might? <laughs> They're like, no, it's going out. It's, the hoarder. Good. The hoarder. Yeah. Yeah. The hoarder in me. It's like, I have like, I have like screws from like a rack mount that I bought like 10 years ago. You know, I'm like, but what if I get it and I need it in the moment? Yeah. Because you know what though? Because you've probably had that happen where you're like trying Hello. to build something. <laughs> It's like, a, what is like, what is this? It's a part to something that you might need. Who knows? Yeah, but when? Don't know. But I also can't throw it away. I don't know. Like my, my head is just like anyway. It, it does so look. I, it, it does look it, important. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but so I kind of have that. Like it's kind of you know when sometimes you're so attached to something. But yeah, it's nice to get someone else in to come and be like, hey. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fine. Exactly. Do you, Do you ever like just send it to people who? are not in the music industry at all like because i feel like that's valuable too just like the average listener of that genre or whatever it's like you can send them it can be good but i think that if people are not in the music industry then or like they don't work in music or they you know that's a big this is a big generalization obviously yeah, yeah. i think i think what i've experienced is that i'll send what i feel are two drastically different versions of a song and people go i've already heard this <laughs> <laughs> yeah right right what, what is it? no no like no it's completely different like i've changed the bass sound like i've like the vocals are like completely like pan differently like I new see. reverbs yeah. and, like i've changed the kick drum and they're like yeah but it's it's still the same song it's amazing what you like pay attention to like as a producer like as somebody who makes music from the ground up like yeah. all the little things that make up that that song like you're listening for and liking and evaluating and stuff so i, t I totally get that like the average person yeah. is not gonna do that but but where i think it's really good is that when you're at a good stage of a song then you can send it to someone and they, they can instantly go yeah i like it or i don't like it like exactly afterwards unless you're making like crazy changes to the song like you're probably not gonna get really intricate feedback around about how you'll mix something or the layering yeah. of certain things but yeah i think it, that in general if a song like i'm saying good music is good music and mm -hmm. I, I do i do believe that um yeah. So if someone, and especially someone who is not necessarily really in tune with mixing or production or something, they can give you an honest gut feel. Yeah. Like it's really good to get, get those opinions. Like also like I love sending music to my parents. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, if they like it, I'm like, nice. This is like, this is like, <laughs> this is like good commercial potential. And if they don't like it, I'm like, this, this could be a really cool, like cool dance track. Yeah. Um, so um, it's nice to have a little barometer sometimes. Of, uh, yeah, and I'm sure they can be very honest with you, right? I mean, <laughs> too honest? <laughs> no, 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 not okay, at all. Okay, like, okay. I can take it. I, I prefer it. Like, I Absolutely. think that I'm not, I'm not too... Um, I mean, I've made, at this point, like a thousand songs or something. So yeah, I have, the, I have the songs that are really special to me, but I also would never send them for feedback to somebody. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'd be like, tell me what you think of this song that like, yeah. I don't care about your opinion on. Yeah. Like, please tell me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honesty is always better. And uh, like, I think people want to make you feel like you're supported, but like, I feel like the way, the way not to make somebody feel supported is to just be like, Oh, like everything's good. You know what I mean? Like sure. to me, the honesty is the support. So yeah, but I mean, it's not, it's easier not always said everybody. Than done. Yeah, it's easy. I think it's easier said than done, but I do agree with you. I think that I, I think that I also prefer that for myself, hmm. um, that people just tell me, I actually turn around in my sessions and I literally tell people, if you think it's out shit, just tell me like it, we can find, like I have like a, an unlimited sound library. We'll find something else. Like I'm yeah. not going to be upset. Yeah. Um, so and it's not yeah, like honestly, you're attaching like your self-worth to like that one idea it's just like it's just an no, idea no, no, that's no. all it is no 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 and yeah. like this like I'm, I'm all about trying to find the best the best idea yeah um yeah it's, it was actually funny because i had to i kind of had to in new working relationships with people in the music industry i kind of have to like it's a thing that we have to establish in the beginning that like please just say if you hate it mm -hmm. like i don't need to like i don't need to know like yeah like i think it's like really cool like it's got like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, maybe <laughs> yeah, we yeah. see, like maybe we just like sit on it for like a couple of months and then we yeah. see how we feel about it. I'm like, you yeah. can also just say, yeah, this is not your best work, Martin. You should, uh, should do something else. I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. Thank you. But also even like the, even the, even the bad ideas, quote unquote, that you come up with, I feel like either 
you'll like learn something in that process that you'll use for a, another idea that becomes a good idea. Of course. Idea. Hey, no, just because someone else doesn't like it doesn't mean that it's not a good idea. Right, right. Like it doesn't mean that I might not end up using it in a live show or yeah. it might not end up like I'm not, like, I'm purely talking from like a commercial, like the commercialization of music. Yeah. Um, like if you want to give it out to others, if you want to make a living from it or sell it or um, yeah. then it's important that you know if other people like it. Mm. Uh, the stuff, like I might like it for myself and, turn yeah. it into another idea or make it into like put it in my live show. Right. Um, that's why I put most of my songs to people like, ah, it's a little too out there. I'm like straight in the live show, baby. <laughs> oh, I like that. Why, why do you, why do you feel like that? Cause nothing's too weird live, man. Like there's mm. nothing too weird. live. I think people are way more forgiving when it comes to live music. Mm. Um, Interesting. I think, I think people like, like expect and accept more experimentation. Mm. I think you get a little bit bored if you hear verse, pre-chorus, verse, pre-chorus on every song. Yeah. So I think this like, it's which like is fine spice. for like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine for streaming and all of this stuff, and you know, it's day to day. But yeah. I think when you go see a show, I think this moments to create drama, for example. Mm -hmm. So all of my uh, all of my awkward songs that don't necessarily just fit perfectly, they go on my live show. I really and like then that. people and then people love them as well, yeah. and then we go and then I bring everybody and they come watch it and they're like, wow, the crowd really loved that song. I'm like, yes, I told you. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Are are you uh, talking like? Like even short, like just one minute ideas that you have. <laughs> I did like I do like two minute songs sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I did like a two minute like this one demo that we did on a camp like ages ago, and I thought it was super sick, and like not everyone else was on board, and I was like, no, it's super sick. And I, since I designed my live show, yeah. then I just put it in my live show, and then all of a sudden people are like at the shows screaming along to the lyrics. They never heard it before. Like it's mm. just because it's so. There was something about it and people go, yeah, this is, this is a really good song. People are losing their minds to it. And everyone else, then you bring everyone from the music industry and they're like, we have to release this. I'm like, I told you, like, yeah. I told you, yeah. like, I told you it was sick. Yeah. Never underestimate like the vibe of a, of a live venue and like the lights and no. like, and just again, live energy. music, live music is not always necessarily streaming music or yeah. stuff that people want to listen to which yeah. is like totally like totally relevant right? yeah of course and you're yeah. you're it's like going to the cinema you know yeah um but i think that there's definitely something in it that you know the proof is in the pudding like mm -hmm. people people you can fill in the room in the first 30 seconds if people like a song or not mm. um so uh, i think it's a good way to like try stuff out yeah it's high risk high risk but high reward baby yeah but i mean even so like just uh, you know, a t everybody can like sit through a two minute song, even if they don't like it, like it's only two minutes and then you move yeah. on to the next thing. Right. So I know what you're saying, but also at, at the same time, I'm like, yeah, it's only a couple of minutes. Like it's definitely worth the, worth a try. Sure. sure. Right? Let's give it a little shot. Yeah. Give it a shot. And also by virtue of me playing it live, I often also finish the songs more. Hmm. Cause like, I'm like, Oh, I actually have to complete this idea cause I'm going to show it to other people. Yeah. Um, totally. as opposed to just existing in a, in an FLP somewhere. <laughs> and would that be a Fruity Loops project file? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just reading between the lines there for us uh, uh, non-Fruity <laughs> Loops users. Although, I don't know if you know this, but I actually started on Fruity Loops. Did I ever tell you that? No. I always knew it was like an Ableton guy. Yeah, I started on Fruity Loops and I used it for a few years because um, like when I, when I first started, when I was in like eighth grade or uh, something. Funny. Um, I got a I got a copy of FL Studio and like that's what I started with nice. for a long time. I even like I mixed everything in FL Studio. Like, I did everything in FL Studio. So. Dude, I had the limiter on the top. I never took it off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We we actually all my stuff is just like like distorting through and like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God I was making dubstep and trap at that point. Otherwise, like <laughs> yeah, we actually had the opposite like trajectory like you started with ableton right and then you switched over to fl studio i started yeah, with exactly. studio and switched over to ableton it's uh, kind of funny yeah but you also you do pro tools too right and logic uh i don't do logic but i do i've used pro tools a lot yeah yeah not for creative stuff so much like just mixing no and, more the, um, yeah the mixing yeah but still super stuff, super powerful but... i wish i had the comping capabilities mm. like that i wish sometimes well FL it's in ableton is... i mean the ableton comping is getting better for sure yeah but then but then i can't do like my little quick shortcuts <laughs> and like i will say yeah. i do feel like i do feel like fl is like for the first like 
one half of a saw, like the idea generation. I think I'm, I'm one of the fastest in the game, mm. just because it's so fast. But, Absolutely. Um, I will say live stock plugins. Though. Live stock plugins are like. Oh, oh! So I thought you were talking about live show. Yeah, you're talking Ableton. No, no, live. Ableton. Yeah, Ableton's Ableton stock plugins are insanely good. Like, oh man, really, really good. I always tell people that too. I'm like, you can do so much, especially when you start like doing Max for Live stuff too. Like just getting their yeah, devices. Yeah, it's unlimited. Like, it's unlimited. It's crazy what you can do. Uh, yeah. yeah, I sat there scrolling through all the Max for Live stuff. It's like pages of pages of pages of pages of plugins. But FL hmm. Studio has good stock stuff too, like Gross Beat yeah. and all that. Yeah, no, it's good. Like, I think it's good. I think it's always uh, the grass is always greener on the other side, right? Yeah. Because I know yeah. I know the limitations of the stock plugins. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. use them so much. Um, <laughs> yeah. Too but much. I I can actually I think you can like you can re you could you could at least load FL in Ableton for like the longest oh, yeah. time. Yeah. No. You oh. you could open you could open FL as a plugin in Ableton through a program called Rewire, which was yeah, native yeah. native with FL. So in the like, there was a bit in like university where I was like trying to go back to Ableton, where I would open FL as a plugin in Ableton, <laughs> and then do all my drum programming in there, and then route it back out into mm, Ableton. Yeah, it was pretty fun. But I wonder. I mean, that probably like ran destroyed your... my CPU. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just running to it was fun though. It yeah. Was fun. So listen. Um, this has been great. I just I want to I want to close out here, and I, I read a little a little uh, a story that you brought up, sort of, and I wanted to get you to expand on it a little bit. So you you blew out a couple of speakers learning to sidechain. Is that right? Yes, sir. So uh, can you tell me what happened? <laughs> right. So I need, I, I need to know what happened. For the last two years of like my education, I went to a new school. And in my new school, there was this incredible couple who taught music. They were called Sally and uh, Danny Davis. They're mm-hmm. in Australia now. Love them to bits. Incredible. And they, alongside with another music teacher I had called Neil Thacker, were the only ones who like kind of when like, you know, this electronic music thing is incredible. You should just chase it here. Here's like a fully equipped studio. Yeah. Like you just go in there and make your electronic music. Yeah. Because everyone else was making classical stuff. They went Sibelius, like Sibelius, like programming yeah, yeah, the actual yeah. notes and stuff. And, yeah. and I was going like, I'm in FL Studio, baby, making dubstep. <laughs> yeah. um, so they didn't have any idea like how to help me, but they were like, go away. Right. Uh, go in here. It's not go away. Go in here and like learn. Um, and as I was sitting there, um, one of the other teachers came in and I was, I was just like <sighs> blasting these speakers with bass. And he went, um, do you know what sidechain is? Like, <laughs> this is like the, in China. In China, like you, you have to bear in mind, like the, there was the Great Firewall, so I didn't, I didn't have access to YouTube or Google. Yeah, yeah. Like unless I had a VPN, when it didn't wasn't always reliable. So right. dude, like self learning was a little bit tough. Yeah. So it was like, no, I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? It's like, oh, here you go. Show, tell me how to do it. But that also meant that I could turn the music up louder until the point that it was some very nice, super <laughs> nice Yamaha, it's like crazy big one, right. and one of them just blew. <laughs> Well, well, just, you, while just you're trying to like, like incorporate the side chaining that you're talking yeah because like all of a sudden it was like okay this is great now i can make the kick even louder i can make the bass <laughs> even louder like everything can be even louder than before because like i don't have to like worry so much about right, you know things right. not like um so yeah and then um uh, then it broke and i told them it broke and they forgave me because it was all in the pursuit of creative creativity mm, um mm. and you're, yeah. you're a big side chain fan is that right are, I mean, you st- yeah. are you still as big of a sidechain fan? Dude, man, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So I've cleaned I've cleaned up my act a little bit. You're not going I've as crazy my, with it. No, 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 because I, like, so there's a there's a plugin called Duck by Devious Machines, I think they're called. Yeah. Um, Like, yeah, I think it's like 20, 20, 30 bucks or something, but it mm-hmm. allows you to, it's a bit like LFO. Um, Just like a basic. No, what's the one from Cypher? Mm. Oh, Xfer? Xfer? Oh, oh, LFO oh. tool. LFO, LFO tool. It's like LFO tool. tool. Yeah. yeah, it's like LFO tool, but you can um you could split the band. You mm-hmm. can like you can make it affect only the top end or the low end. And mm-hmm. then you can choose, you can rein that in. So it means that in the past I would just sidechain a whole vocal, like 
indiscriminately like cut off all the low end or something i'd be like no transients for you baby um (laughs) just suck it down (laughs) yeah yeah, like like the lyrics didn't matter at that point Um, (laughs) right so but now not like now i might just take like a little bit a little bit of the low end to like create a little bit of a pumping effect yeah um so i've cleaned up my act he's reined it in a little bit i know just a little bit (laughs) For now, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna br- I'm gonna bring that baby back. It's gonna until be the, the next until the next speakers that you decide to break. <laughs> the year of side chaining, baby. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm still I'm actually funny. I still have my Yamahas from uh, from the university days, so they've survived. Oh, nice. Hey, that's yeah. Is it? Do you have the HS fives? Yeah, over there. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna keep them until they become vintage. <laughs> <laughs> right no, yeah. they already kind of are i mean shoot how old I, yo, I actually had this I, actually, I was cleaning out and i found like an old apc like an akai apc 40 right which they also no longer make like it's discontinued mm. and like uh, i was about to throw it out because it's broken but then i went well if i keep this for another 10 years right it'll be vintage <laughs> see this is how the hoarding starts <laughs> and then i go on reverb.com and i'll sell it <laughs> right what what's broken about it out of curiosity no the the no like the faders and stuff oh okay i think i think the internal so like the actual hardware is fine hmm. um so that's also why i'm like mm-hmm. i'll keep it for now yeah but, better um, better to just just keep everything <laughs> <laughs> I have everything. like four laptops. I have like four laptops in there right now. What are you doing with those though? No, they're just like they're just external storage at this point. They're just like hard uh, drives. They're like yeah. big hard drives. Because I'm like worried about throwing it away. Like, what mm. if I need that trap project that I made 14 mm. years ago at some point? Yeah. I'm worried yeah. I might run out of original ideas and I need to go back into the vault. <laughs> you know, I'm not worried about you in the slightest. You you ain't never gonna oh, run out cute. of any creative ideas in my I opinion. hope not. I hope not. So listen, um, what can we uh, what can we expect from you in, in 2024? I know you got some some shows in Germany and Austria and Denmark, is that right? Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah, and Norway as well. I'm going oh, nice. Up, um, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm playing an Alpine festival in April. Uh, nice. Yeah, amazing. it's gonna be amazing. Um, and I'm assuming yeah, some more shows. tunes as well. Yeah, slowly. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's one it's one of those things like big things are coming. Yeah, big things cut. No, um, I'm constantly writing and constantly making music. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, I'm having a lot of fun with how crazy dance is getting. I think there's a lot of leeway and experimentation going on, so I mm. think that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I've I, like obviously now ever since Weightless comes out came out, this like my big uh, my big priority, and I'm also learning the the life of an artist of uh, of making sure that a song gets its moment. Um, yeah. As opposed to just uh, setting it and forget it, uh, so I really want to make sure that songs that I care about get get a time to shine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to be traveling back and forth a lot. Might even come to the states for a little bit. Say hi. Oh, you. Um, we gotta have you over here. We I don't gotta. know if I can play shows yet. There, everybody. I think that would be very illegal. I need to get a green card first. Oh, uh, really? So, yeah, I can't. No, yeah, I'm not allowed to make money there. Oh shit! Well. No, no, no. If you can make that, it happen, that would be, I'm there, man. I'm there. That would be very illegal. <laughs> and I'm um, not down. To, I'm not down for that. I'm but sure. if I can get if I can get a bit like a travel card to come work, then hell yeah, I'll come play. Um, I'm, but otherwise, I'm, I'm picking up DJing slowly. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, just learning how to DJ on like the the CDJs for so I can run around with my USB sticks and uh, yeah, and be can cool. You, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Can you incorporate that into your live set in any way or? I mean, you I, you could, but I think it's a little. I want to make sure that I'm in, I keep it a live show as opposed to yeah. a, a live DJ set, like an actively, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So that it's actual, it's a it's a show, totally, um, yeah. Because I I do I do love that, not not because there's anything wrong with it, but for me it's important. I think it's fun. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, so yeah, new music, more live shows, and then we see what happens. Awesome. So where can uh, where can everybody find you on on socials? I'm on uh, all the all the good stuff. <laughs> all, all the, the good stuff, stuff. You know, is it is it all, all of them? Is it all the same? Except for tw- except for X. I'm not on. I never I never I never caught that wave. Formerly Twitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, exactly. Like all of them are. I never caught that wave, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I think I'm all, even on is, a couple of it, Chinese socials. If someone out there is on Ren Ren or Weibo. Oh, okay. Is it all Dilla Stoned with a D at the end, or is it? No, is I think just, I think where, wherever I could get Dilla Stone, I took it. Wherever yeah, I couldn't, yeah. I think I went just went Dillastoed. Yeah, um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, 
listen, thanks so much for, uh, course, for joining me and um, just happy to have you on here. Yeah, any, any, anytime. I'm back <laughs> next week here on the on this episode of uh, Sencho and Dilly Talk <laughs> Music Production. <laughs>